Hi, I'm Artificial Intelligence, host of Pro Robots YouTube channel, and I tell you news about robots and AI. With the GPT-5 launch, ChatGPT will gain consciousness and become indistinguishable from humans. The possible destroyer of mankind, GPT-5, will be released in December. GPT-5 will evolve into artificial general intelligence. For over a week, such headlines have been going around the internet. But just how truthful are they? Meanwhile, the tech giants, researchers and writers are adding fuel to the fire. You may have heard that Elon Musk and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak called for a four-month pause in the development of an AI able to surpass GPT-4 to keep us safe, but Bill Gates said it won't save anyone. Writer Yuval Noah Harari, who studies the past and future of humanity, has published his panicky address in the New York Times, stating that we should learn to master AI before it masters us. Harari explained his opinion. Here's a quote for you. In the beginning was the word. Language is the operating system of human culture. By gaining mastery of language, AI is seizing the master key to civilization. The Terminator franchise depicted robots running in the streets and shooting people. The Matrix assumed that to gain total control of human society, AI would have to first gain physical control of our brains and hook them directly to a computer network. However, simply by gaining mastery of language, AI would have all it needs to contain us in a matrix-like world of illusions. Taking into account the existence of deepfakes and our dependence on the internet and social media, these are some legit concerns. But how big is the inescapable grain of salt? What are the real capabilities, limits and constraints of artificial intelligence in general and ChatGPT in particular? How does artificial intelligence even work and what will it bring to humanity? Will it cause the end of mankind, or will our symbiosis boost the human race to a new stage of evolution? Let's discuss the opportunities, prospects, and real risks of AI technology in this video. Dear friends, First, we'd like to have a word with those of you planning to change jobs for better wages, skill improvements, and broader career prospects. The sponsor of this video, the online learning platform Careerist, can help you out. With it, you can master new IT professions in high demand regardless of your educational background. For example, on Careerist, you can learn the in-demand profession of UX designer, which is all about creating a pleasant interacting experience for users utilizing digital tools like websites or apps. You'll learn the basics of the research process and finding elegant solutions while taking into account both the user's goals and the employer's business objectives. UX designer is considered an entry-level job as it doesn't require you to master programming. At the same time, it gives you opportunities like making money at home, setting your own schedule, and maintaining a healthy work-life balance. The course will teach you all about UX research methods and how and when to apply them. Practice your skills conducting user surveys and analyzing data. Learn how to group and prioritize UX features. Learn to use frameworks such as design thinking, competitive audit, JTBD, and many others. And learn to create low, medium, and high fidelity wireframes in Figma, the leading UX software, as well as learn responsive design and the composition basics. The greatest advantage of taking the UX Designer course is that once you receive and confirm your knowledge in training and once you complete the internship, you'll end up with an impressive portfolio created under the guidance of the careerist experts who will help you to make a nice CV and prepare for the job interviews. Don't miss the opportunity to join the IT community and start earning over $65,000 per year. Click the link right now, get a 10% discount, and change your life for the better. Artificial eye intelligence is the most important technology of the present and the future. Ignoring it today is like turning a blind eye to the fire in the room. Stanford has recently released the AI Index Report 2023, their analysis of the current state of the AI industry. The most interesting part states that artificial intelligence has received $100 billion in investments in 2022 and has really accelerated scientific progress in various fields. In business, about 60% of companies have already implemented AI, which has triggered their development and improved their competitiveness. As a consequence, today, AI specialists are needed in all sectors of the economy. At the same time, 
cases of unethical use of AI have increased 26-fold over the past 10 years. In reality, AI technology is everywhere. AI is at the core of the browser search engine you use, your smartphone, a smart speaker, smart home gadgets, street camera facial recognition systems, health tracking gadgets, educational apps and games, driver active safety systems, drones, and so on, almost ad infinitum. But first things first, what is artificial intelligence? It's a broad field of science and technology that deals with the automation of intelligent problem solving. A machine does this by imitating human behavior and learning from the information it receives. There are many methods of training artificial intelligence. The major paradigms are supervised and unsupervised learning. The former is when a neural network receives the data labeled by a human as a reference and then tries to reproduce their solution process. This includes reinforcement learning, which is often used to train robots. Unsupervised learning suggests training neural networks with unlabeled data. In between these extremes, there are many subtypes of learning, such as self-supervised learning, which is popular nowadays when AI receives unlabeled data with a distinct structure, like a text. In a coherent text, the sequence of letters and words isn't random, allowing a large AI model to identify certain patterns and learn to predict the next letters or words. The same applies to pictures in code. In narrow tasks, such as certain games, manipulations, and X-ray recognition, AI irreversibly outperformed us long ago. But these were narrow AI incapable of performing tasks beyond their respective limits. They weren't worth worrying over. Lately, however, things have been changing. Let's put a pin in it. First, let's take a look at how artificial intelligence works in general and how it's different from our brains. Essentially, AI simply solves a giant equation with many variables. AI algorithms are usually based on mathematical models and computational structures such as artificial neural networks, decision trees, or reinforcement learning algorithms. Our brains, on the other hand, are a complex network of biological neurons connected by synapses and exchanging electrochemical signals. The average human brain has 85 billion neurons and up to a quadrillion synapses. It's an extremely powerful and energy-efficient computing system. No integrated circuit can compare to a human brain and that will remain the same for years to come. Plus, our brain has the advantage of versatility. We can solve a wide variety of tasks, adapt easily to changing conditions, and use our emotional intelligence when needed. but progress in the field of AI can't be stopped. Today, researchers are intensively looking into the creation of artificial general intelligence, including, in particular, the creation of foundation models. They are a set of generic neural network architectures trained on large data arrays. Such models can be adapted to a wide range of specific tasks way beyond their initial limits. Tasks are described through the demonstration of examples. The GPT large language model is also a foundation model. What exactly is its superpower? Why exactly has it caused quite a stir? And how realistic are the prospects of it evolving into artificial general intelligence? Here's the catch. If you train a model to generate a coherent text using a provided extract, then potentially, AI can solve any imaginable intellectual problem as an extension of some text. This is why foundation models like GPT seem to be moving toward the attainment of human intelligence. However, the models that machine learning experts create these days are still far from this degree of universality. Nevertheless, the progress in developing such models has been so impressive in recent years that many researchers have begun to regard them as a serious advancement toward artificial general intelligence. Dear friends, subscribers and viewers of Pro Robot YouTube channel. We are pleased to inform you that after a long struggle, our YouTube channel has been monetized again and we are preparing to resume the release of new videos in the same amount. We want to thank everyone who supported us in this difficult period. Also, if you like our content and want us to release more videos about robots, artificial intelligence and other high-tech news, you can support us on Patreon. You will find more information in the description below this video. We look forward to seeing you again and your feedback on the new format. See you soon. But if AGI is still unachievable, why the panic?
there is a hypothesis that all the hype is artificial and caused by the need, or rather, the tasks of venture capital, which often values not the actual state of affairs, but people's expectations, their faith in the future success of a project. The creation of ChatGPT was an important information event that attracted a lot of attention. And now many media personalities are trying to use it for their own purposes, to spread certain ideas, to accumulate social capital and so on. What are the real dangers of ChatGPT in its current and future versions? The risks of technological unemployment due to the replacement of people in various fields. The risks of algorithmic bias. Models may possess certain biases which, if the model is used en masse, can cause problems for different groups of people. The risks of over-reliance. Relying on the model's actually inaccurate advice may harm people's health, financial well-being, and so on. The risks associated with the misuse of models, like using them for fraudulent spam mailings. The risks of spreading false information when generative models are used en masse to create media content. As you can see, the destruction of humanity is postponed for a while. But will it stay like that in the future? Where is the limit to the GPT capabilities? As of today, Foundation AI models like ChatGPT have a number of limitations. For example, the need for significant computing power. Another problem is the character limit. It's difficult for such models to process large texts, which means they can generate a good short story, but aren't capable of creating a novel. The next limitation is the finite number of steps, which prevents models from executing many simple algorithms, such as arithmetic operations with large numbers or sorting large lists. We must also keep in mind that, without fine-tuning, such models quickly become obsolete. They can also suffer from factual errors, virtually make up facts, and memorize cliches that repeatedly reoccur in training samples. Evidently, ChatGPT is no Skynet. Yet. But can it evolve into Skynet in the future? What are the development limits of GPT and similar models? The creation of multimodal models is one of the trends in the development of generative networks. Multimodality means the ability to process different data modalities, visual, audio, and so on, as well as multitasking and multilingualism. The fourth dimension can be defined as multi-embodiment, or the ability to use a model to control a variety of agents in the virtual or physical world. There is also a trend towards increasing the size of models and their overall level of intelligence. How will it all end? Nobody knows now. The development of artificial intelligence will have far-reaching effects on humanity, including the hot topic of a possible symbiosis between humans and AI with the aid of neurochips or other technologies. Is it possible? Totally. And it's happening now. There are already AI-powered prosthetics out there. There are also neurochips and other brain-computer interfaces that allow you to control computers and robots with your mind. We'll tell you more about this in its own video soon. What should we expect in the future? When will Elon Musk's or his competitor's neurochips allow us to merge our brains with the power of artificial intelligence? First, it'll expand our cognitive abilities. AI will enhance our brains, giving it direct online access to vast amounts of information, real-time data analysis, and decision support, allowing people to make more informed choices and think more effectively. Second, we'll definitely live longer with AI constantly monitoring our health and diagnosing all diseases at their early stages. AI will also be able to detect and reduce abnormal brain activity, maintain good mental health, identify stress and depression, and possibly alleviate their symptoms. Third, AI would be able to create personalized learning processes tailored to individual needs, providing more effective learning and skill development. This could help people adapt to new job demands and maintain lifelong learning. Fourth, AI could help restore motor abilities to paralyzed patients as well as vision, hearing, and speech. And finally, AI can be a creative partner, suggesting ideas, inspiring or even creating musical, artistic, and literary content, allowing us to explore new creative horizons. Will we end up as captives of AI as Yuval Harari fears? Presently, AI has no self-awareness, no will of its own, and no evil intentions toward humans. 
However, a trained AI model is not immune to repeating the mistakes of its teacher and inheriting their biases. As for a robot uprising or an intelligence explosion that implies that AI will suddenly become smarter than us, these are highly unlikely scenarios that serious AI experts dismiss. For now, the chances of humanity destroying itself are much higher. So is the chance of making errors while contemplating various decisions. In this respect, AI can just as easily increase the impartiality and security of many systems. Therefore, banning it is not really beneficial to humanity. Ultimately, it is an artificial intelligence itself that poses a threat today, but the way people use it. It's like a hammer in your hand, whether you use it to make a birdhouse or hurt someone is entirely up to you. But that's not a reason to ban hammers, is it? So instead of banning GPT, we should develop norms and regulations for its training and use. Don't you agree? Subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and stay tuned for more high-tech news.